complex structures, and serious technical problems are among the primary reasons why designs akin to the space shuttle seldom emerge in the contemporary era. Yet, defying the odds, a Colorado-based company has resurrected this design to vie for and secure NASA's contract under commercial crew development phase 2. That bold entity is Sierra Space, presenting its visionary space plane, the Dream Chaser. Despite initial apprehensions, Dream Chaser stands poised to fulfill the long-held aspiration of a reusable space plane. Remarkably, it currently boasts higher acclaim than its contemporary counterpart. Boeing's CST-100 Starliner So what sets Dream Chaser apart from Starliner? Are there any drawbacks to its design? Dive into the details in today's riveting episode of TechMap. With public faith in Boeing's Starliner dwindling amid its indefinite delay, Sierra Space's Dream Chaser emerges as the ideal alternative to bridge the gap in NASA's strategic agenda. Among the trio of designs contending for a NASA a contract to address the void left by the retirement of the space shuttle program, Dream Chaser stands out as a distinctive contender offering renewed prospects for ferrying astronauts to the ISS and other destinations in low Earth orbit. Notably, the other two contenders from SpaceX and Boeing adhere to traditional capsule designs. As per an unofficial announcement, the vehicle is currently undergoing final developmental phases, preparing for an anticipated debut later this year. As the acclaimed successor to NASA's space shuttle, Dream Chaser exudes confidence in its ability to outshine Starliner in the race to the ISS. Similar to contemporary spacecraft, Sierra Space's vehicle distinguishes itself through its employment of a lifting body design. This innovative approach enables the spacecraft to execute controlled runway landings upon re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. Versatility is a key feature of the Dream Chaser, with its launch site, landing site, vehicle configuration, mission duration, and other characteristics, all adjustable to cater to diverse user requirements. Moreover, its reliance on non-toxic fuel and its independence from specialized infrastructure afforded the capability to touch down on aircraft runways virtually anywhere. This versatility offers a myriad of advantages, such as expedited and secure transport of payloads and astronauts returning from space to their respective destinations. Furthermore, the ability to land at various locations across the globe fosters international scientific collaboration. Beyond this, the completion of a human-rated variant of the spacecraft holds profound implications. In the event of a medical emergency necessitating urgent crew evacuation from space, Dream Chaser stands ready to serve as a potential life-saving resource. Even in scenarios demanding emergency landings, the aircraft-like capability of the vehicle ensures the safe return of the crew to the ground, leveraging the widespread availability of runway infrastructure worldwide. For some, the standout advantage of Dream Chaser over Starship in the project lies in its capability for point-to-point -point travel on Earth, obviating the need for a separate structure akin to Mechazilla. While this holds true to a certain extent, it's crucial to recognize that Dream Chaser pales in comparison to the Space Shuttle Orbiter, being only a quarter of its size. Consequently, its payload capacity is restricted to a modest 5 tons, rendering it suitable primarily for light tonnage transport endeavors. Sierra Nevada Corporation, or SNC, stands apart as the sole entity constructing a runway landing spacecraft, diverging from the Apollo-style capsule approach adopted by Boeing's Starliner. Unlike the capsule design, which relies on descent through the atmosphere, Dream Chaser utilizes uses rocket engines to facilitate a soft landing. In contrast, CST-100 typically descends to the ground via parachute or, in emergency scenarios, lands on water. Ground landing entails touchdown on any terrain other than a designated runway, encompassing grass fields, dirt strips, water bodies for seaplanes, or other suitable surfaces. This mode of landing necessitates specialized training and procedures due to variable conditions and the absence of established infrastructure compared to traditional runways. In Star contrast, runways serve as meticulously prepared and designated surfaces at airports, specifically engineered for aircraft takeoffs and landings. Typically constructed with asphalt or concrete, runways are outfitted with markings, lighting, and navigational aids to facilitate pilot guidance during landing and takeoff maneuvers. Opting for runway landings ensures a predictable and controlled environment for aircraft operations, mitigating the inherent risks associated with touchdown or unprepared surfaces. Initially, SpaceX and 
envisaged a ground landing for its Dragon spacecraft, employing the propulsive landing method. However, stringent requirements imposed by NASA compelled the company to abandon this approach, reverting instead to the traditional splashdown method. A compelling rationale for this transition is the superior cushioning effect offered by water upon impact, particularly for the crew housed within the cabin. This stands in opposition to the apparent challenges encountered by Starliner in managing such landings. On the other hand, despite not splashing down, Dream Chaser is still able to get a gentle trajectory during re-entry at less than one and a half gravity, or in low G. As the Dream Chaser re-enters the Earth's atmosphere, it encounters significant atmospheric drag. This drag slows the spacecraft down, causing it to experience forces that result in deceleration. The spacecraft's design and aerodynamic characteristics are carefully engineered to manage this deceleration safely. As a result, the forces acting upon the crew and payloads will undergo significant reduction, guaranteeing a smoother and more comfortable journey for all on board. This holds particular significance for delicate scientific experiments or sensitive cargo necessitating meticulous handling and protection during the return journey to Earth. This advantage resonates with Dream Chaser's overarching goal of furnishing a secure and dependable mode of transportation for both manned and unmanned missions. It facilitates both controlled and uncontrolled descents, thereby mitigating the potential for structural or thermal strains that might undermine the spacecraft's integrity. Nonetheless, it's essential to acknowledge that Dream Chaser's design isn't without its imperfections. There remain certain considerations that SNC engineers must address should they intend to emulate the space shuttle design. Dream Chaser utilizes landing gear for ground landings, akin to the approach employed by the Space Shuttle. The Space Shuttle Orbiter featured three sets of landing gear that extended downward through doors in the heat shield. As a measure to conserve weight, once deployed, the landing gear could not be retracted. Given the potentially catastrophic consequences of premature gear extension as it breached the heat shield layers, manual controls were the sole means of lowering the gear, with no provision for automatic deployment. Furthermore, owing to the shuttle's high-speed landing approach and the inability to abort the landing attempt, the landing gear had to deploy flawlessly on the initial attempt without fail. But what if the space shuttle's landing gear failed to deploy during landing? In simple terms, it would result in catastrophic consequences. The lack of structural robustness rendered the space shuttle incapable of executing a belly landing. In scenarios where the cargo bay was empty, there might have been a slim chance of crew survival. However, if loaded, the payload could likely hurtle forward into the crew compartment upon impact, resulting in a tragic outcome. With optimism, Sierra Space will navigate these challenges successfully. It's undeniable that adapting an antiquated design like the Space Shuttle for implementation in a modern vehicle such as the Dream Chaser presents a monumental undertaking for the Sierra team. This was evidenced by the protracted development timeline for their first prototype, Tenacity. Tenacity was an estimated development period of eight years, underscoring the arduous journey undertaken by the Colorado-based company commencing its endeavors in 2016 and now nearing readiness for its maiden flight. In stark contrast, SpaceX embarked on the development of the Dragon spacecraft in late 2004, achieving operational status by 2010, a mere six-year timeline for the inaugural version. The subsequent iteration, Dragon 2, was brought to fruition in five years, with production commencing in 2014 and entry in into service into 2019. While conventional wisdom might suggest that subsequent space plane iterations should witness expedited development timelines, leveraging knowledge and experience from initial endeavors, this may not necessarily hold true for Sierra Space. Presently, the company's second space plane within the Dream Chaser cargo fleet, Reverence, is undergoing development, with manufacturing having commenced in 2022. Sierra Space has openly acknowledged the myriad challenges inherent in spacecraft development, ranging from enhancing payload capacity to revolutionizing launch processes. Undoubtedly, numerous obstacles persist in revitalizing the shuttle's design and ensuring its reliability in the current era. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and we look forward to seeing you next time.